Afternoon all. Here I have a Cole Morgan Gold Line XT servo motor, model MT306B1-E1C1. Here's the motor connection, and here's the feedback connection. This feedback has an A, B, Z, and its complements encoder output, and also Hall effect, a UVW Hall effect output. This feedback here inside that motor is missing the Z pulse, so I've got to replace it. But before I replace it, I've got to document the Hall effect in relation to the windings of this motor. I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit, but here I have a 24 volt DC motor uh, coupled to the servo motor uh, pulley so that I can rotate this servo motor. And while it's rotating, we'll be looking at the UV and W windings and the Hall effect output the UVW Hall effect output and we'll find the relationship between these two components the motor and the Hall effect. That way when I go put the new encoder Hall effect unit on the shaft of that motor I can get it positioned properly so it'll run with that servo drive. Let me give that DC motor over here some speed. There we go. Now when we derive the relationship between the U, V, and W of the motor windings and the Hall effect output, we have to, when we go to install that new encoder, we have to be rotating in the same direction. And I'll show you why when I go hook up these connections. Here on the top pin is winding U and on this middle pin is V. So we're going to look at U with the second channel of the oscilloscope and V is going to be grounded. Over here on this feedback connector on pin 10 is plus 5 volts and on pin 7 is ground from an external power supply over there for 5 volts. And V is going to be grounded to that power supply. Over here we're looking at pin 17 which is Hall Effect 1 on the Fluke oscilloscope. Let's go see what it looks like. Spread that time out a little bit. There we go. Now it's steadier. one and down here is motor phase U with V grounded to the power supply. If I could get that to sit in one place we could see that the peak of U and V is in the middle where all effect one goes low.
Now we're looking at Hall Effect 2 in relation to U with V grounded to the power supply. And the peak falls right at the leading edge, just a hair past the leading edge of Hall Effect 2. Let's go look at Hall Effect 3 in relation to U and V. Here's Hall Effect 3 in relation to U with V grounded. And it falls just inside the trailing edge of the peak of U to V. Now we're back looking at Hall Effect 1 and U with V grounded. If this is going clockwise. I'm going to stop the motor and we're going to go counterclockwise. Now notice that the peak here is in the valley of Hall Effect 1. Let's go back the other way and look at Hall Effect 1 in relation to U with V grounded with the motor going counterclockwise. Stop the motor. Now we're going counterclockwise and look at this. The peak of U and V motor phases with V grounded to the power supply. The peak is in the middle see if I can bring this in. There we go. It's a little bit better. Still bouncing around a little bit. But the peak is in the middle of when Hall Effect 1 is high. So clockwise, the peak of U and V motor phases with V grounded is in the middle of when Hall Effect 1 is low and counterclockwise the peak of U and V is in the middle of when Hall Effect 1 is high. Isn't that amazing? So when we pull, I'm going to look at uh, the Hall Effects in relation to U and W and V and W. But, for now, when we install that new uh, feedback unit in this servo motor, this is what we're going to time it against. I need to look at the other waveforms of U and W and V and W in relation to all the things to make sure that I can get it all looking the same. Okay, up here is Hall Effect 1, and down here is the sine wave generated by rotating that servo motor of U and W, with W grounded to the 5 volt power supply that's powering up the Hall Effects. You can see that the peak of the sine wave is on the trailing edge of Hall Effect 1. Let's move over to Hall Effect 2. Here's Hall Effect 2 and the UW sine wave. It's just inside the leading edge of when Hall Effect 2 goes high. This is with the motor going clockwise. We're rotating that motor clockwise with that DC motor. Let's look at Hall Effect 3 in relation to U and W. Okay, 
we've moved to Hall Effect 3. The sine wave is generated by U and W. And we are, the peak of the sine wave is right in the middle of the high on Hall Effect 3. Now what do you think is going to happen when we go counterclockwise? I'll bet you the peak will be when Hall Effect 3 is low. Okay, let's go backwards. Now we're going counterclockwise. Look at that. The peak of the sine wave is when Hall Effect 3 is low. Now one last waveform to look at uh, in relation to Hall Effect 1, 2, and 3 is when we look at V and W with W grounded to the final power spot. Let's set that up. rotating clockwise again. Up here is Hall Effect 1. Down here is V and W with W grounded to the 5 volt power supply. Power supply that's powering up that Hall Effect. We can see that the peak of the sine wave of V and W is just inside the trailing edge of Hall Effect 1. Let's move to Hall Effect 2. Here's Hall Effect 2. We're moving clockwise. And the sine wave generated by V and W is in the low of Hall Effect 2. If we go counterclockwise, I better to be in the high of Hall Effect 2. The peak will be in the high. Let's try it. There we are. Moving counterclockwise. Hall Effect 2, the top waveform, V and W, generated sine wave. And now the peak is in the middle of the high on Hall Effect 2. Let's move back clockwise and look at Hall Effect 3. Here's Hall Effect 3. The VW sine wave is just inside the leading edge of Hall Effect 3. There we go. We've looked at all the waveforms, UV and W windings of the motor, Hall Effect 1, 2, and 3. everybody here we are at the house and we're going to talk about the timing 
of Hall Effect 1, 2, and 3 to the phases U, V, and W of that motor. I hear from earlier today what we did was we found points of the generated sine wave of UV, UW, and VW and where the peak of that sine wave of UV, UW, and VW intersected with the high side, the logic high of the Hall effects. Hall effect 1, Hall effect 2, Hall effect 3. Now you'll notice that the rotation of the motor made a big difference. Up here, pin 17 on the feedback connector of that servo motor is Hall effect 1. Rotating counterclockwise, U to V peaked in the middle of that Hall effect 1. Now down here, counterclockwise again, rotating that motor counterclockwise, looking at pin 16, Hall Effect 2 on that servo motor's connector. V to W peaked in the middle of the high side of Hall Effect 2. Now here's the different one. Hall Effect 3 on pin 13. U to W peaked on the high side of Hall Effect 3 when we were going counterclockwise. I made this chart to help me tomorrow when I go to uh, remove that bad encoder and Hall Effect feedback unit. Uh, what happened in that feedback device, I've got good A, A bar, B, B bar, but I don't have Z or Z bar. And luckily, I've got all the Hall effects, Hall effect 1, Hall effect 2, and Hall effect 3 serviceable inside that feedback device. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to time the new replacement encoder to the windings of that motor. Now here is the test setup that I used to document the timing of Hall Effect 1, Hall Effect 2, and Hall Effect 3. Over here is an external power supply creating 5 volts DC to power up the Hall Effects and encoder inside that feedback device. Pin 10 on the servo motor feedback connector is the plus 5 volt DC into the feedback device. Pin 7 is ground, so I've got the plus 5 volts to pin 10 and ground to pin 7. The Hall effects are in 17, 16, and 15. Pin 17, 16, and 15. Hall effect 1 on 17, Hall effect 2 on 16, and Hall effect 3 on 15. The Hall effects are open collector. So I have a 10K pull-up resistor pulling pin 17 up to 5 volts DC, pulling pin 16 up to 5 volts DC, and pulling, pulling uh, pin 15 up to 5 volts DC. Probe 1 is looking at Hall Effect 1, or Hall Effect 2 or Hall Effect 3. Probe 1, I move between the three Hall Effects out here. The oscilloscope ground probe ties back to the ground of the 5 volt power supply. So here I'm moving probe 1 between the three Hall Effects to look at their waveforms. That's the square wave that we see. What do we do with the motors U, V, and W? The fascinating thing about servo motors is that if you manually rotate them, they'll generate a sine wave. 
And that's what we're seeing on U to V, U to W, and V to W. Now here's the first instance uh, where I'm looking at the uh, generated sine wave of U to V. U is going to oscilloscope probe number two. That's the sine wave that we see on the bottom of the oscilloscope. I reference V back to ground of the power supply. And the oscilloscope ground probe. Then, after we've documented or made a movie of the three Hall effects in relation to U and V, I moved V, which is our ground, to W. And then we documented the three waveforms, the square waves of Hall effect 1, 2, and 3 in relation to U and W with W grounded. Then, with the ground on W, I moved U to V so that the oscilloscope probe number two was now on V in relation to W, grounded, and then we documented the three Hall effect waveforms in relation to V and W. Looks complicated, but <laughs> it really isn't. The fascinating thing is, with this setup right here, you can see the relationship between the three Hall effects and the motor phasing. Now, every single servo motor will have a place that looks like this. I have yet to work on a servo motor. I got that top half off the screen, but you'll see what I'm talking about. I have never worked on a servo motor that had Hall effects in it where I couldn't find the peak line up with either the high side of the Hall effect or the low side of the Hall effect depending on whether we were going clockwise or counterclockwise. I put all these uh, diagrams at the end of the video so you can take screenshots of them. But that right there is the first time that I'd been able to physically go in and time Hall effects uh, to the motor. And the reason being because the Hall effects were built into the feedback device which was removable. Most Hall effects are built deep down inside the motor housing and they're fixed uh, at the factory. You can't get to them without taking the, the uh, uh, motor apart and at the same time they're fixed at a certain position within that motor. You can't move them around. So there's no adjustment. I was able to adjust these Hall effects in relation to UV, UW, and VW because they were built into the encoder Hall effect feedback device. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, folks, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that video. That was fascinating. Now, tomorrow, I've got to, based upon what we documented today, I got to put that new encoder Hall effect feedback device into that servo motor. No, we couldn't get the whole motor, but, but we could get the encoder 
Hall Effect feedback device. Go figure that out. I'd have loved to get the whole motor. <laughs> I wouldn't have to gone through all this. It would already have been time from the factory. But since we couldn't get the whole servo motor, we had to make do with what we had. <laughs> okay, folks. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.